I don't know wh- how on what basis Liverpool have decided to sign this guy. He I I don't see any significant uh, achievements that he has made till now. And being a bald dude with a Dutch accent, it is impossible for you to sound motivating or encouraging to the players at all in the dressing room. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, good segue to go into the next topic, uh, which is Arne Slot. Avan, has he been confirmed? What's the scene now? Is it like confirmative that yeah, he's coming? Yeah, yeah. I think yeah? he's more or less confirmed. All the all the top journals called it. Um, I think he himself said it in a couple of press conferences. So I think he's coming. Um, uh, yeah, we are joining that bald bald group right now in Premier League. And I think he's 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 not he's not Pep kind of ball. He's not a Ten Hag kind of ball. He's like clearly ball. I can't see a single stick of hair on him. He's completely. He's he's Bro, he's bought into the revolution. So, oh really? No, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. There is something so here. Like, <laughs> yeah, there's no brains. Pep, Residual Pep has head. something here and there and all of that. He's kind of he's still in that phase of like, should I go completely bald or not? But my guy has come, you know, given his soul to it. So yes, I'm in there. <laughs> With him, I think, but... I think he's using polish and wax and all all that stuff. I think the <laughs> thing is that I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you why Arnest Lodge looks more bald than the other baldies because he doesn't have a beard, so he looks like a full egg. Yeah. Like there's nothing, Robert, there's no speck yes. of hair anywhere. Yeah, he looks more yeah, bald exactly. than bald. So <laughs> he's yeah. bought he into like it hundred percent. Looks like Voldemort almost. <laughs> That's Voldemort. Voldemort. Okay, he has a nose, but okay. Anyway, uh, no, I think uh, his appointment is confirmed, and at this point of time, I I have no reason to believe this is going to fail. I mean, it it can go sideways by December, and we are like tenth or something. But given how he has performed with, with Feyenoord in the last couple of seasons, and and I've just read about him a lot in the last one week or so, um, I. Again, I think it's it's all coming down to how we typically look for managers who who basically mm-hmm. perform, who, who who get something which is more than the sum of the parts. You know what I'm saying? I think mm-hmm. he, the teams we worked with on a budget and the results he delivered, uh, all of that kind of works into Liverpool. And and as AJ said, <clears throat> he he is exactly the kind of manager we would need right now, because. The other case being where, say, for example, we got like Tuchel or Alonso or something, because they've already established themselves so much, there is this, there is this added pressure for us to prove that okay, you know, you have to kind of start delivering right away and all of that. But after Klopp, I think we need a rebound. We definitely want a rebound, and we and I'm hopefully this rebound turns out into a long term relationship. I, I, I don't know, but the onslaught, uh, given his profile and everything, and given how he has proved, it's a very calculated risk and I don't see it going wrong so we'll see how it goes uh, Sid what are your thoughts bro like on this um, are you intimidated by him or are you underwhelmed no. I am actually I'm kind of <laughs> enjoying this you know <laughs> like he another like bald Dutch manager is coming to the Premier League I am not really intimidated by him uh, and I, I mean, it, it. I, I don't know wh- how on what basis Liverpool have decided to sign this guy. He, I, I don't see any significant uh, achievements that he has made till now. I, I would have personally thought Ruben Amorim would have been a much better appointment. And being a bald dude with a Dutch accent, it is impossible for you to sound motivating. Or encouraging to the players at all in the dressing room. <laughs> uh, wow! It is. It is. This is your trauma is, speaking. It is. It is a lot of trauma. Yes, but no. Like, yeah. It, like you said, Maybe right? It's probably going to be a rebound. <laughs> yeah, it's probably going to be a rebound. I don't. I don't know enough about Arne Slot at this point to even think if he's going to be a good fit for Liverpool or if he's going to actually take the Premier League by storm. Right now, I think what Liverpool want is somebody to just keep the ship steady and build on top of what Klopp wants. And we have to see if Arne Slot or Slot wants to sort of, you know, fit into that mold of what Klopp has left behind and try to take that on and continue that, you know, organized chaos sort of philosophy that he used yeah. to follow. Or is he going to implement a new philosophy of his own? And will he then want like new players? Will he want a new approach? So that is something that still probably needs to be figured out so 
If it's just a rebound manager, sure, great, fun times. <laughs> no, I think I think the philosophy. Bro. What is that? What does a rebound <laughs> manager mean? <laughs> I don't understand. Rebound that. manager by definition my definition of it is since we couldn't get Alonso who was our preferred choice or made our preferred choice we will we will let Alonso go to Real Madrid for the after this year end of this year, I mean next year basically and once he goes there he wins a couple of uh, titles or champions leagues or whatever Real Madrid does what it does it spits out managers anyway and at that point of time you know Ancelotti will be out of Liverpool as well and Liverpool and Alonso will have this long lasting committed full relationship I, so I love that's how, my definition which is confidence I've been always saying Ancelotti will be well, out of Liverpool of like by 5 10 years no <laughs> <laughs> no like... just saying like if you go by that hypothesis of like this rebound or fulfilling manage- management choices then yeah I think that's what I'm thinking but again it, i can't speak too much there but to, to one of your points right said so, uh, what you said why we can't couldn't get amrim i think liverpool have been doing this no ticket policy when recruiting anyone be it the players mm-hmm. or be it the managers or anything i think uh, amrim was kind of playing liverpool around for more of this um, sign on fees or he was kind of taking an interview with west ham and then he ended up apologizing to um, sporting that you know he should he shouldn't have gone to west ham or some bullshit like that so all of that is pr nonsense which we really don't want to be associated with um, again i think we might as well be with given how I think and start is kind of doing the press conferences but <laughs> again i think initially um, i don't know i think uh, the personality didn't match i guess and also i think his formation is completely 3 4 3 or something which is because right now everyone all the teams in liverpool right from youth academy and youth they're playing 4 3 3 high pressing and arne slot's philosophy will be slightly different 4 2 3 when high pressing but it, it switching completely to a 3 4 3 formation is going is going to disrupt a lot of things in terms of signings or in terms of the academy mindset and all of that so this is a carefully thought out choice so I mean I'm optimistic I'm very optimistic uh and he might actually be more successful to be honest when Pep decides to kind of go away so also who knows you think he'll be no. able to challenge at the top right away with this team no not right away uh because this team still needs some more fine tuning um maybe next season finish in top 4 get a champions league go to like quarters or something of champions league that's good enough and then after that we'll see no i was just going to say that the biggest you have you have all the ingredients for cooking up something really nice or something really disasterful given the fact that there will be so many changes there will be so many players falling out like van dijk approaching his end of his career sala having some spats here and there trent alexander arnold not sure what he wants to do in life uh, in terms of like his playing position andrew robertson kind of like being phased out all the kids uh who did pretty well this season but not i mean you don't even know like with the kids their kids uh so the one season doesn't reflect of how they will pan out in the long term and whether they'll be motivated to the same level by a new manager as they were from Jurgen Klopp Jurgen Klopp was family right Arne Slot mm-hmm. is an uh like uh you know step dad like a step dad yeah so <laughs> it becomes it becomes it becomes a yes. challenge overall for the club to manage and if he can if he can manage it i mean then he totally deserves the job right but if he doesn't then uh, you clearly can fall back on some other people plus also there's not a lot of people available like who would you bet on i don't exactly. think you would bet on any of the big managers mm-hmm. if you have to go for a no name then might as well go for a person who literally nobody knows of so then he gets a little bit more freedom to do his own things rather than going for amarim or zabi alonso who comes with like some sort of baggage and you know all of those mm-hmm. things so i think it's a it's a decent enough choice to go with him. Yep. 